Yeah, I thought I'd just uh, point something out here. Yeah, this, uh, if, you're, if you can't see what, what I'm looking at, uh, it's a uh, Biden summit of exclusion is an unmitigated disaster by a Powell organ. As you maybe you can see that, uh, or maybe you can see that as far as like you know, be able to actually see it, see it. Anyway, uh, it has become clear, clearer by the day that the U.S. Uh, hegemonic gri uh, grip on the content is failing. Now, let's see. I sh I've been able to play this over and over again because I I rather enjoy it. But um, let's see if I can play it again. Now, usually I'm able to uh, to do this, and let's see what works this time. Uh, nope, says sorry, delete, uh, has been deleted. But yeah, I'm watching it. Let's see. Nope, won't let me do it either. Let's see if I can go up here. This is what I mean. This clip is obviously being critical of uh, Biden, who apparently I think is sitting right. Let's maybe pass for this. I possess him right there. And yeah, he's pretty much saying that the embargoes on Cuba and Venezuela are, um, are, uh, uh, he condemns and blockade Cuba and recognizes the medical solidarity provided by Cuba and the, uh, to the world, which they did. They they provided a far more effective type of vaccine than any of the corporate uh, sellouts here in America did. And that's apparently um, Twitter does not like that when it comes to uh, to um, To, uh retweet it if I still can't do it still can't do it and if you go up here now usually if, if a if a I think if a tweet has been deleted you wouldn't be able to see it here either I mean it would be like a tweet uh this not this has been deleted yeah yep this page doesn't, uh, doesn't exist I'm trying to yeah exactly so I mean, you guys can't hear it from what I know of it here, but uh, it's just interesting that there's nothing wrong with this. There's no, nothing salacious, nothing. It's literally just criticizing the, the uh, Biden and the United States for what they've done to, to, uh, uh, to Belize and other countries in that hemisphere. So I, I just find it really funny. Also, uh, another thing I found even more interesting is, first of all, I've, I've said that I really, really, really hate commercials on YouTube. When they first started out, there was as many because I apparently it wasn't, they didn't have the, uh, the, not content, but they didn't have the, um, the viewership, I suppose, on a lot of, uh, of their uh, channels on there, uh, but since a lot of people have managed to get millions of views, millions of subscribers, and all other stuff, it's profitable for marketing. I still hate that. I don't like commercials. Never have. Never will. Um, anyway, so my point being is, uh, I saw a commercial about my congresswoman uh, Joyce Beatty. And it said that uh, she is fighting hard to get men, uh, uh, she's, she's fighting hard against the, uh, the big pharma. Whoever top, uh, first of all, she's all Wall Street. I mean, nothing but Wall Street. Uh, as she's pharmaceutical, she take, she's taken 49655 from the company itself, but individuals. Uh, and PACs, well, see, PAC is, twin, is about 5,000 more than individuals. Telling me that there's no way in hell she's fighting them. She's fighting for them, but she's not fighting them. Uh, and let's see, one of the other, one of the bigger uh, contributors, let me just go back over here. So kind of, look, well, you know, actually, anyway, uh, 
when one of our biggest contributors here is uh i think it's a Kahlberg, uh kravis roberts and the company lp they uh, they have three companies are their their core their core businesses one of which is health and that's here as well same thing in, in uh in the uk now in the uk they have the uh they have a kind of their own version of management for all sorts of sort of universal health care but they're slowly turning it into they're slowly turning it pri uh, private uh which not that nothing nothing that's uh nothing that is private in regards to like industries uh should be private there shouldn't be any private uh utilities that should not be private uh internet should not should not be private food and stuff like that should not be private nothing of that nature should be private um it should all it, it should all be it should, it, should, it should all be public um anyway so blackstone is not a blackstone is i think the biggest um real estate giant in uh well in the country really but um spe specifically in ohio blackstone actually owns a bit stake in the in the uh in the property management company that currently probably matches this place and not very well let's see what else pnc actually pnc i looked it up uh was, was the main finance uh, financier of uh, redoing this building so they're one of the they, they were one of the main um banks to do that and pnc actually i believe uh, is closely associated with, Bla with blackstone um if I saw that right, I don't know. Anyways, the point being is the fact that Joyce BD is anything but trying to fight for any kind of health care for anybody. Uh, let's see, where is that? Anyway, I was, I'm trying not to do this anymore because there's not much of a demand for it. And I only do this right now because it's a way of me letting go of, of, of things I had learned to look up. Um, this is why we need more people who understand monetary theory. Check them out. Uh, Real Progressives. Uh, it's the only Real Progressive organization that I, I wanted to uh, work with and I am lucky to currently be doing that. In fact, uh, I've actually enjoyed debating people online. I debated people for up to a couple of days because they think they can come up with uh, an argument. Come back as the same argument they had earlier. Uh, there was one, uh, I keep going, there's one, there's under, there's one guy on, online that uh, even though he was debunked as far as uh, in the interest rate agreement between um, uh, L. Randall Ray and Warren Mosler. Um, I we literally we literally had an argument uh, going through. I used the uh, the interview that L. Randall Ray had on Macro and Cheese uh, just a, a week or so ago. Uh, two days later, uh, he started the, he started the uh, the. Uh, I started a thing saying that Warren Mosler and L. Randall Ray disagree on interest rates. Uh, I think it was interest rates. Um, and I was saying, no, they, they don't. And then all of a sudden it went to Volcker. Now, I didn't know that Volcker actually had raised the interest rate to the point where it literally bankrupt quite a few interest uh, uh, investment banks. <clears throat> And I see that I kind of see that same um, same thing here today. Um, just it, it I, I I look at patterns. At least I, I try to see patterns and try to see where it goes. Stuff of that nature. And it's, you know, with the Fed uh, actually selling out more uh, uh, MBS uh, mortgage backed securities. Uh, in order to be able to get uh, funding to hike interest rates, uh, because the only way that they can actually do actual spending in regards to putting money, fresh money, uh, uh, into 
the economy is uh, through legislation, through Congress uh, voting, on, voting on the spending bill, uh, spending law, whichever you want to call it. That's the only way that they can actually put in uh, uh, printed money, if you will, as far as that part goes. Otherwise, um, when they when they buy securities, they're taking money out of the economy because securities are uh, just a high yield or supposed supposed to be high yielded uh, in, uh, interest rate bearer. If they're selling the, if they're selling that, then they're, they're taking the money out, but if they, but if someone is cashing out, like they're repo, uh, repurchasing it or 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 um, selling it, uh, that's putting money back into in, into the banking system for to make room for more loans. At least that's how I understand it. So a lot of these people who want to sit there and say that uh, that the government creates creates money by. Uh, by buying bonds is the opposite. They sell the bonds in order to be able to get to put the money back into the economy. And that's the even that that that's through the banking system making more more money for loans and stuff of that nature. Um, and the loan and a lot of the reserves that banks have are for the uh, overnight interest rates uh, between between banks. Uh, it's dependent on uh, is is just dependent on the size of the loan and you know, stuff of that nature. Anyway, my point being is, uh, this is why we need everybody to learn monetary theory. I'm not talking about the the BS that uh, that everybody thinks that that is as far as just printing money, not just printing money. Uh, the only way that money is quote unquote printed is if uh, is if the uh, Congress passes a spending bill because every time they pass a spending bill, that is new money that that goes into the economy. But it's not like uh, they're not showering uh, cities with with paper; they're simply just accrediting accounts with money, uh, with reserves, with uh, with a unit, uh, uh, a financial unit. I'll just say that. Um, this is why it's always good to. Uh, watch and listen. Macron and cheese with Steve Grum Brian. Um, I always good to watch um, his interviews with uh, with people with people on status quo. Uh, uh, his debates, like debates he recently had with uh, with a libertarian. Uh, I mean that was fun, but it almost looked like uh, it almost looked like he was being gained upon because I didn't. I don't. I don't know the. Uh, I don't know the uh, the actual um, way they do the show. Uh, they bring on a guest, two people to debate. Then eventually they'll have like the portion of the show that's actually regular conversation. I'm guessing. Uh, I didn't stay throughout the show. I just wanted to watch uh, the debate. And I did. And unfortunately, Steve actually had uh, his, his uh, I guess there was some kind of thunderstorm going on uh, in Philadelphia or in Pennsylvania, I'll just say that. And it knocked him off. Uh, when he, when that knocked him off, that since he was actually carrying the conversation, uh, the other guy wasn't even attempted to like interrupt or say anything. He waited until something happened, and that's when he started talking. Not saying he meant to do, not meant, to, not not saying he meant that kind of a timing, but that's what happened. <clears throat> And so that's why I think next day Steve summarized uh, his thoughts on the differences between libertarian and progressiveness, socialism, and whatever else. So anyway, and it's it's people had to remember it's not the it's not necessarily the system that uh, that do all this. It's the people in charge of the system what they do with that system. Like for instance, a lot of people keep condemning communism and socialism. Well, if you look at the the actual definitions of those two things, they could be great for a society if done the way that was, supposed, that was meant to be done. But you have these people who had massive egos, who were maybe taught to take advantage of every situation, no matter what happened to other people. That's what you have with, you know, uh, that's what that's what happened during the first uh, uh Hitler, uh, Hitler, evil, massively evil. But the 
but the organization he was a, he was a part of uh, or was in charge of had the word socialism in it. So that's one of the uh, things that is a misrepresentation uh, represent misrepresentative of socialism because that that's not socialism. It's, it's like it's like people these days look at the current financial uh, system as what MMT is. That's not what MMT is. MMT is a way of looking at the current system. It's not the current system. If the current system was MMT, then the people in charge, Congress, <clears throat> would look at not the amount that needs to be spent, but the capacity of which the country has to be able to do that without creating uh, a supply, uh, a supply inflation. All right, that's, that's, uh, a, a, a we have a, a supply chain we, we have a supply chain fuck up right now uh i think i meant i think i meant uh, demand on that as far as my monetary demand uh we don't have enough monetary demand oh, we have too we have a lot of monetary demand but not enough supply for that and that is that's government that's the sanctions tariffs uh, embargoes that were put on other countries uh to chew in their in their uh in their way to try to satisfy some sort of trade deficit to me in my view a trade deficit is a good thing because that means that we are to some degree is a good thing because that means that that our money is being used internationally Meaning that that's their main reason, main reason why our country is a world currency. Bad because most of that, most of most of the jobs that we had that helped with the deficit moved overseas, making the in my in my eyes, anyways, uh, making the deficit worse uh, in that aspect. If we had more. Are those types of jobs that went overseas that uh, cemented a um, a really good supply chain here, we wouldn't have the supply chain problems we have right now. Um, Abbott, uh, who Abbott Laboratories in Michigan only supply forty percent of what this of a uh, formula for this country, meaning to me anyway that. Uh, another country has those facilities. So that is a problem in my eyes in regards to the supply chain here. That and semiconductors, which go into automobiles and computers and stuff of that nature. Um, if you're in short supply of that, that, even though the demand is still there, that means that that creates a possible, possible price hike. And uh, given the fact that uh, the word, I think the word monopoly is going to come up in a lot of different headlines. Monopoly as far as supply chains. Monopoly as far as uh, commodities. Uh, monopoly as far as currency. Um, stuff of that nature. We have the currency. That's not a problem. We have a monopoly. The United States government has a monopoly on the, on the treasury. What we, what's going on is the fact that we no longer have a monopoly of the commodities, no, no longer the monopoly of the supply chain for our own country. Um, and because of that, things are can be called artificially spiked as far as prices. Because of the supply chain, because places like Kroger's can actually uh, raise those prices, even though they may have a strong supply of it. But because they're the only game in town in regards to maybe certain aspects of the of uh, groceries, um, they openly say they're going to hike them up. I think it was 2021 that was an article that I was going to read, but decided not to at the moment uh, that said that they would raise prices two to three percent, even if there's enough supply. So they knew from the get go that they're going to do it. And given the fact that the emergency food stamps uh, that a lot of us actually uh, benefit from and are very thankful for are going to run out either way because the emergency of the pandemic has gone down. 
And I'm not saying because of the vaccine. I'm saying because of people's knowledge of um, of the majority of you know, basically the knowledge of of, uh, of COVID and the things that involved in COVID and the things that involved in the vaccine and stuff of that nature. So uh, people have realized what helps more other than the vaccine. The vaccine, in the very beginning, I was saying uh, that is creating a demand. Uh, it's creating a demand for a new vaccine from the market. And that's precisely what happened. Uh, because if you notice, uh, a lot of the pathways for reasons for that to come in the United States quickly vanished. Now it's all about uh, now it's all about just the manufacturing of it. Uh, who has a contract for that and stuff of that nature? So that's one of the things that MMT has actually helped me look at is is the supply and supply chain, the demand the aggregate demand for it. They create, in my mind, they created the demand for this by saying that there is uh, a pandemic and manufacture. Oh, that is it's kind of going into conspiracy theory, but because there's been no straight up answer, there's been no uh, there's been no causation behind it. At least not you know fully proven official. That's where the that, that's where the conspiracy theories come out and seem logical and seem like they that could be right. So that kind of feeds that and that that that's why it makes me kind of wonder about the whole thing. I'm not not saying any of it was faked, I'm not saying anything like that. But what I'm saying is it overall it created a demand. It created a change. It created a change economically and it created a change as far as uh, people's behavior and that's another thing that mmt looks at looks at is people's behavior how they spend what they spend it on and stuff of that nature um and that's and that's the reason why at first uh mike norman who i i follow uh quite a bit uh was talking about how people uh when they first got those checks uh they they spent them mostly on credit uh paying down credit instead of buying uh, certain things. And that's the reason why a lot of things, those prices went down because they wanted to create more of a demand for it. Well, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. Thanks for watching. Uh, peace out for now. And go to realprogressives.org for more information about MMT.